Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, Peter Canisius became the first Dutchman to join the newly founded Society of Jesus in 1543. The Jesuits quickly found themselves on the front line of the Church's attempt to counter the Protestant Reformation, which was still sweeping across much of Europe at the time. Despite being founded by a former soldier and organized along military lines, each Jesuit entered battle equipped only with divine truth and love. They hated heresy, but loved heretics. Thus, while Canisius preached trenchantly against Calvinism, he rejected the idea of attacks upon its founder, John Calvin, observing, with words like these, we don't cure patients, we make them incurable. The American historian, Ann W. Carroll, says this of Peter Canisius. By his debates, his writing, and his teachings, Peter showed that Catholicism was thoroughly rational and that the Protestant arguments were not convincing. By his efforts, Peter won Bavaria, southern Germany, and the Rhineland, central Germany, back to the Catholic Church. He also won converts in Austria, Hungary, Bohemia, and Poland. Poland had become largely Protestant. But thanks to the efforts of Peter and the other Jesuits, it returned to the church and is still Catholic today despite communist persecution. And what fueled Peter Canisius' tireless efforts to win back Europe for the church? It was, of course, his daily reception of the body and blood of Jesus Christ at Holy Mass. Hence my challenge to you this week is to go to daily Mass during this week and pray the following prayers composed by Peter Canisius. If you can't get to daily Mass, Pray it wherever you are as a spiritual communion. Let us pray. See, O merciful God, what return I, your thankless servant, have made for the innumerable favors and the wonderful love you have shown me. What wrongs I have done, what good left undone. Wash away, I beg you, these faults and stains with your precious blood, most kind Redeemer, and make up for my poverty by applying your merits. Give me the protection I need to amend my life. I give and surrender myself wholly to you and offer you all I possess with the prayer that you bestow your grace on me so that I may be able to devote and employ all the thinking power of my mind and the strength of my body in your holy service, who are God blessed forever and ever. Amen. What difference will this prayer make to your life? Let's find out from one of our fellow pilgrims on the road to Emmaus. St. Peter Canisius was originally from the Netherlands and he had the opportunity to what's called the spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius Loyola, which is a retreat that allows you to grow in relationship with our Lord. And he was actually led through this retreat by one of the initial Jesuits who was known as a master of the spiritual exercise, St. Peter Faber. One of his first missions was actually to go to Germany where the Protestant Reformation was going on at the time. And he was able through being both very gentle but very firm to bring many people back to the Catholic faith and to back into a relationship to our Lord in the most holy Eucharist. Pope Benedict XVI actually said that he was given an impossible task which was only possible because of this profound relationship we had with our Lord that was nourished by the daily reception of our Lord in the Eucharist. The prayer in many ways echoes the a prayer that comes from the spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius Loyola called the Sushipe prayer. This idea of really offering that the Lord has been so generous with me. He's given me so many gifts, continues to give me so many gifts. And so there's this desire that wells up in my heart that I want to return those to the Lord so that the Lord might use that for his greater glory. And I think that's what really is encapsulated by this prayer. So it's a beautiful way to really give thanks to the Lord and also to offer in thanksgiving uh, our, our lives in, in service to him. We talk about our attendance as Catholics on Sundays as our Sunday obligation, right? Some people use that term. But daily mass really is a response of love that we give to our Lord. We don't do it obligation, but it's because of all that our Lord has done for us that we come out of devotion, out of love, to express that love through our participation, our attendance at daily mass. A group of students, uh, I heard them talking about how they would go to daily mass. And I remember um, hearing them talk about how they would go at 7 a.m. at St. Thomas every morning. And I was like, wow, that's crazy. Like I. 
I can't imagine doing that. Um, but a couple months went by and I decided to give it a shot um, during Advent that year. And I got there and I remember just being so inspired by the community that I found there. Um, and it was clear that you know, they all wanted to be there. They were excited and really it was about Jesus. Um, so I, I kept going after that initial um, daily mass experience. And over time, I, I started to see like the effect that receiving the Eucharist daily had on me. Um, you know, I became more disciplined in my prayer life and more grounded in my faith. And particularly starting my day um, with the Eucharist, like it set everything else into place. And you know, as a busy young person, like it's hard to have peace. It's, there's so much going on and you're figuring out a lot, especially in college. Um, but receiving the Eucharist every day gave me so much peace. Um, and you know, I continue to, to go to daily mass because I need Jesus and I'm receiving the King of the universe. Um, so I would say that, you know, my reverence and love for the Eucharist increased the more I went to mass. It's like the favorite part of my day though now. <laughs> for myself, I actually did not grow up Catholic. So the idea of the Eucharist was quite uh, foreign to me until I went to college and I had friends that would invite me to go with them to mass. And eventually by my junior year, I went through the RCIA program and I still remember anticipating Easter, just waiting for that day when I could finally receive our Lord in the Eucharist and how much joy it brought to me at that Easter vigil. I started this new job that my boss invited my very first day of work to come with him to daily mass. My boss was a daily communicant. And so each day he would invite me to come with him to mass at St. Mary, actually also another St. Mary there in Phoenix. And through this, I found that my relationship with the Lord deepened in, in such a profound way to the point where some days I would just go on my own uh, to Mass in the morning on the way to work. And then he'd invite me again at noon to go with him at lunchtime to Mass. And so there were times when I was going to daily Mass twice in a day. And I think it really changed the trajectory of my life and opened me up to the possibility of vocation. And so uh, fast forward to today, and now I'm a Jesuit priest thanks to uh, that initial connection, a deeper connection with our Lord through the Eucharist. It's not what you get out of Mass, but it's what you have to give and like what you have to offer the Lord, trusting that the Lord takes that offering and like blesses and multiplies it. Um, so I think when it comes to like daily Mass, um, sometimes it's easier to, to focus on that, that offering and receiving Him every day um, just rightly orders my day and gives me the strength to do all that he asks of me in any given day. Um, yeah, just receiving Jesus, I am made more whole and become more and more like him.